Increased crime in big cities has destroyed the opportunity for many restaurants to recover following the coronavirus pandemic. And that's according to the very chefs and proprietors who operate these establishments. Now the crime wave at the worst possible, the crime wave happened at the worst possible time. Because as you all know, the recovery efforts following COVID have been difficult. You've got inflation standing in the way, they talk about that. You have the rising cost of ingredients, the changing dining habits, debt obligations that these restaurants have. Many of them didn't get approved for PPP loans, which later get forgiven. They had to take out small business loans just to stay afloat during the coronavirus pandemic, which they have to pay back. Now in cities from San Francisco to Washington DC, crime is adding to those costs, or at least adding to the stress of getting diners and people back into their dining rooms. In April, for instance, the Golden Gate Restaurant Association asked its 800 plus members in San Francisco to select three priorities for 2023. And crime topped the list, said Lori Thomas, the association's executive director and the owner of two restaurants in the Bay Area. One restaurant owner in the survey was quoted as saying the following. The city has become too easy for people to use drugs and cause mayhem. It's not safe out there and we need to change that. And they also provided some specific examples. So it's not just big fancy restaurants who are complaining about this. You also have chain restaurants, fast food chains in particular. McDonald's chief executive said crime and issues related to homelessness are impacting the chain's 400 restaurants in the Chicago area. Not to mention hindering efforts to attract executives to its Windy City headquarters. And as we know, just last year, Multiple Starbucks stores closed in various parts of the country, several of them in Los Angeles and San Francisco because of rising crime and the fear that that crime would harm their workers in these locations. The first 25 years, we had one break in said Ramon Aguirre, who's the owner of Bella Note. Since COVID, we have, we're have we having break-ins every three months. And there was a time when we had a break-in for like four or five weeks straight. Tragically, they ended up having to close their restaurant in July and that was just short of their 28 year anniversary. But these are just anecdotes. That's what we hear from people who want to minimize the reality and the severity of the crime that's taking place. It's just anecdotes, anecdotes, anecdotes. Just ignore it, ignore it, nothing to see here. Except let's take a look at the broader picture. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation data collected from 8,300 law enforcement departments, violent crime rose nearly 20% at restaurants from 2019 to 2022. The latest year stats are available. But those 8,300 reporting agencies, please pay close attention to this everyone, represents only about 46% of overall police departments and don't include major cities such as New York, San Francisco, Chicago and Washington DC, which have been crime infested for quite some time now. I know people want to deny it, but it is absolutely true. It is not only harming local businesses, it's also harming the restaurants and people are finally starting to speak out about it. And as a result, insurers, because that's another thing we hear, Jake. We don't have anything to worry about, okay? I mean, they're all insured, right? Their insurance company will take care of like the windows being smashed and things being stolen from them. It's gonna be okay, except the insurance premiums have exploded if you're lucky. Or the insurance companies have started dropping coverage for these restaurants altogether. Yeah. So, you know, when we say for some time, that's since 2019. So this has been happening in the last three to four years. And and I tell you that for a number of reasons, one of which is that these cities were not quote unquote crime infested before. And from the 1970s to 2019, crime had decreased significantly. And unfortunately, after COVID, there was a, a a large outbreak, and so there's a number of different reasons for it. And the article gets into some of them, and which we'll talk about in a second. But first, guys, this is happening everywhere. And so, friends of mine went out to eat in Oakland, and they were so terrified by the out of control chaos in the streets and the crime happening right in front of them. Like, and this is happening nonstop in Oakland. That they were like. Yeah, forget it. We won't go out to dinner anymore. We'll just eat at home. So that's affecting the restaurants, and and it's not just 
Like I know what extreme left is gonna say like, oh, did we bother your dinner by yeah. committing crimes? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, yes you did. So mm -hmm. when normal uh, people anywhere from rich to middle class to poor go out to eat and, they, and they're worried about they're gonna get attacked, their car's gonna be robbed, etc. Yeah, that's bothering them in a very, very significant way. But it's actually so, really good for the cities, Cenk, because with these businesses shutting down, then they get to lose their tax base. Yeah, how does that help, guys? It's great. And so minority communities are the number one set of people complaining about this. Yep. Uh, the NAACP in Oakland says this is out of control, please send more police. But more specifically, back to the root causes, a lot of folks are saying uh, it's the lack of prosecutions. And so that's also complicated. And, and, and I happen to think that the prosecution, the lack of prosecutions is mainly because we uh, lowered some of the penalties here, which made some things misdemeanors and they plead down to nothing. And that's why it feels like there's lawlessness going on here. Last year, let's go to graphic seven. Last year, Sam Sanchez, the chairman of the Illinois Restaurant Association told a reporter from Chicago's PBS station that our problem is prosecution. Sanchez suggested Chicago could add 1000 more officers and it would make little difference unless Kimberly Fox, Cook County State's attorney prosecutes those arrested. Her approval rating is so abysmal that she has decided that she will not run for reelection. Yeah, and I don't think it's as clear cut as prosecutors who are progressive deciding not to prosecute things. Although that is a problem. Okay, I think that it's more when we change some of the laws, it caused the ability to do plea deals to go away, which then led to releasing so many people. And, it, and the number one problem is recidivism. And the guys who commit many crimes have been released, and that's a massive mistake. If you enjoy this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.